Welcome to the Keepers of the Golden Gate, session 26. It is the 15th of November 2019. I am Ryan, the GM. Here are my players. Hi, I'm Callum. I play Lord Averett Brain with the Human Sorcerer. Hello, I'm Adrian. I play Arya Bluebird, the Half Elf Druid. Hi, I am Scott. I'm playing Combar, who's a Half Orc Paladin. Hi, I'm Stuart. I play Reacher, Happy Elf Monk. Perfect. We are so and Sophie this week, but that's fine. We shall crack on. The right. Who remembers what happened last time? Obviously, are you? I broke everything. a hammer. You did again. <laughs> <laughs> when will you learn? I destroyed my book. Yeah. Well, when will you yeah, learn? I think, wait. <laughs> yeah, I think that's kind of more. Worrying that you destroyed your book. I don't have to worry about the book no more. I do have to worry about explaining it, but that's if we ever meet Dan again. Think of the late fees. Infinite late fees. <laughs> I, mean, so <laughs> like, I don't have the book. You can't prove I've got the book, so I, feel like... I will never pay it. I mean, surely they can just reprint it, right? <laughs> I mean, who knew what was inside of that book? You were supposed to. You were supposed yeah. to. I mean, supposed to and actually knowing. Mm. Yeah. I mean, it's gone now, so no point crying over exploded book, I guess. You were just so happy to say that, weren't you? I mean, partly. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. It was a fun thing to see. Um, but uh, There was a red guy that literally <laughs> destroyed like, the party almost. Yeah. A lot of people nearly died. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. I believe yourself and Kitty came very close to actual death. Yep. The worst One shot always. That was very scary for me to listen to. <laughs> yeah. It's like passive healer anxiety rising. It's like, but why is this happening? Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's it. That does just happen. Uh, right. Okay, okay. Uh, I don't think what else happened. Anything else happened? You just remember? Kitty was um, spooked through the night, but that was about it. She took first watch and was like, mm. "Something's weird. I don't like it." I, I was kind of just trying to get beat that guy, mm -hmm. and then he done the boost because he's a widow. Yeah, and no, no, nothing about the herald he summoned from hell or anything. No, nothing. I mean that that's oh, yeah, small, that's that's small details, man. That's hmm. small. De yeah, and it just like flew off into the air to be exactly. found somewhere. We didn't else. have to fight him. Kind of glad we didn't have to fight him, to be honest. But yeah, you wouldn't necessarily have had to fight the red guy. You you chose to be like, come out here and say that. So I like violence. What can I say? And you got plenty of it. Wow. Yep. Yep. It's like my hammer liked violence. Past tense. Um. Yeah. Uh. Okay. Cool. Press F in chat. <laughs> Press F in chat. Um. For anyone caring about listening uh, and following our nonsense and madness, the goal system has changed to a player goal each as opposed to one party goal, so we're going to discuss that now. Um, XP earned per goal still goes to the whole party, because screw individual levelling, that is not okay. That is when people fall behind, then lose interest because they're falling behind, so fall behind more. Screw that noise. Right. Goals. Let us have a look at whatever Callum has done to this wonderful goal sheet. Why is everything smaller, Callum? Because <laughs> it's cold it outside. Okay. It was irritating me that I couldn't see everything and I still can't see everything because he's just nudged off to the right and I'm, it's triggering me. But like, you don't, you don't need to worry about that. That's just so that I can see it. These are... Okay, never mind. I know, but if I can't see it... Urgh. Okay, can you make it bigger? All of it? <laughs> Lol. <laughs> we are not children, obviously. Um, right. That better. Sure. Eric. 
ghouls. Yes. What's, mm. what's Eric's goal? What is pressing on his mind? Given the last thing we see you do is think of your bedroom and hit the hammer on the floor. Well... We've got to think back to last session and like what was going through his head. Because he's just lost his book. Mm -hmm. um, and he's upset. Mm -hmm. He is a little bit upset, but he didn't show it because there's a big bad guy there. He's now home, he can kick everyone out of his bad bedroom and go sulk if he wanted. <laughs> just pulls the coverage over him when he's landed and he's like, nope! <laughs> Everybody see yourselves out. <laughs> <laughs> um, Wait, where did we finish off last? So, Eric used the Eye of the Storm, his hammer, to smash the ground. Big red swirly portal opened up and he's all fell into the portal and then... That's where Hopefully it ended. We end up in Clarehagen, but we don't know yet. <laughs> yeah, that. Oh hope. yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we're either going to end up there or Horizon or the best. Or the other or... side of the world, one of them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's quite a far bit across the world where you're going or hoping to go anyway. Um, yeah, it's a bad road. Mm, yeah, it's so one of the one of the reasons why we went to Clarehagen, I've just remembered, is uh, so Eric can actually secure the. Trade deals with Horizon. Yep. So that's why probably do, what I'll be focusing on. Why do we need trade deals with Horizon? It's so it looks legitimate, so I'm not. It doesn't just ah, look like lies. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. I'm remembering now. Just in case I anyone pokes brain. their nose into like the agreement between the office of Justoria and like Eric's family business, um, which I'm just going to call the Rainwood Estate because I've so so not named that yet. Um, so the Rainwood Estate and Horizon can have no agreement other than Eric just quite, saying he did. It'd be quite fun if the company's called Sunnywood. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. <laughs> or the, the Drywood Estate, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so what's your focus then, Eric? What's, what would you like to do if indeed you do end up in there? I guess it's literally just to begin the trade relations with Horizon. Like, Cool. We're waiting for Jastori to heal uh, or recover mm -hmm. so we can go back and what it been about an hour since we'd left? Not even that? Um, I think by the maybe time the fight had ended it had been maybe 16 minutes by the time the fight had ended. So, yeah. yeah. Maybe, maybe longer uh, if you include looking around Horizon a bit for horses. So... Yeah, I'd maybe reword begin trade with Horizon, and I'd maybe put it as legitimize trade. Because right now I've got a spell. Or just legit, legit. trade. Yeah, I was going to say legit trade. <laughs> it's like, so I accidentally just <laughs> like tabbed off it, so it's just le trade. <laughs> le trade. <laughs> we shall begin le trade. This is about to have is that house, isn't it? Timize. It's fine. Good enough. Nobody sees this anyway except us. So. I, I know, but it books crap out of me. Yeah. We're all judging. I know you are. Just to annoy you. Wait. Why? Why? Why is mine slightly darker than theirs? Because you've got, got it highlighted. No, I don't. The reach is like brighter. Or is it? No. It looks brighter. It's not. They're all the same. Oh, it's just your eyes are mad. <laughs> 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 oh dear. Like part of my subconscious, like Ryan, you missed the joke, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> um, right, okay. So, legitimized trade with Horizon. I think that's a pretty good goal for you. Um, are you a bluebird? What's the thoughts on goals? Or in fact, do you have any um, thoughts from the last session? In fact, well, I would be interested in again. Um, I was I was going to say like learning more more well, learning more about what happened to the bow and you know that creature there. So I'll probably try to get to learn more infernal from from Krimbar mm -hmm. and ex look at my like. Um, and not analyze, you know, in, investigate my bow. I don't know how to to mention this. 
but but that's mm. the the idea, you know. So we're gonna put a uh, Laren Inferno from yeah. Cumber. Cool. We'll pop that. Yeah, because who knows? Maybe my bow now has something inscribed on it, and I don't understand because I don't read or speak Inferno. So that's a. Well, the good thing is that you're already attuned with the bow because that's what you decided to do mm -hmm. a couple of sessions back. So you know yeah, yeah. what it can do. You know it's called forest fire, etc. Well, that's yeah. good. Um, Crumbar, did a book. Mm hmm. Goal. Um, goal, acquire new weapon. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that seems easy, yeah. That seems very Crumbar as well. Yeah, quite, quite. You could add in, go and acquire a Crumbar proof weapon. That would make <laughs> it very hard. Yes! I, I don't <laughs> think that's it. Shall we go get Eremos again? Is that <laughs> what we. <laughs> Eremos <laughs> should have been my weapon. I you, totally he was Crumbar proof if I've ever seen anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. I, I, I acquire a new weapon. Acquire a new weapon. Okay. Let's so go ahead and get a stick off a tree or something. Like that. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I'm going to be uh, fairly, fairly understanding when it comes to that that goal. Kitties will obviously wait till next week and reach. What about yourself? Uh, f try and get word to the great gold worm. Cool. Likely dead son. Oh. Get word to GGW about Gil. Yeah. Cool. Just leave it at that. Yeah. Uh, good, yeah. <coughs> yeah, that's simple enough. Anyway. Get word to GGW about Gil. Cool. Okay, okay. There we go. So, potentially lots of delicious XP. Um, what's that? One, two, three, four, five. So that's potentially two thousand five hundred XP if my math is right. So nice, nice. That's that would right? actually be a first for you, would it not? No, not at all. How dare you? You've lost a thousand XP. <laughs> Go. <laughs> Luckily, you still get to stay level five, though. <laughs> <laughs> to save us having to do with that headache. Um, I times. No, I was totally wrong. It's 1,250. If it's 50 times your level, you're level 5, and there are 5 of you. Boom. Okay. Cool. I just can't count. Understandable. Right. Opening the session. These are, again, in a very... You don't see each other as you feel yourselves fall, like the ground falls away from you. You fall into red, kind of vapory mists, and it lasts for like a moment or two. Um, there's lots of like wind rushing past everyone, noises, etc. And then a very, very padded landing. As you yeah, all, you were in a mental home. <laughs> as you all break. A four-poster bed. As you just crash on it. No, my bed. The portal Wait, above you, bed? as you are all bathed in red, crackling light, seals shut. As you have all fallen from the ceiling onto the four-poster bed. Luckily enough, the fall was broken ever so slightly by the little canopy above it, which was not designed to brace against five falling people. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder why. Yeah, some of which are in plate armor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. Uh. I think I just Crumbo just kind of stands up and is just like looking around because was not expecting to land in a bedroom. Um. I will tell you what, then, right, Eric, describe the surroundings forever, the right. Destroyed. Fuck. <laughs> well, oh my god. There's a uh, like a little fireplace uh, toward one side. Um, like a little open log fire, I guess. Um, there's uh two bookshelves with books on, and then there's like a a big desk with um load of different like ink bottles, quills, parchments on it, and quite a fancy looking chair. There's a big bear rug in the middle as well. So we could have landed, but we landed on my magnificent bed, which is now a pancake. So so quite a fancy gaff then. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, I think while well, I'd be looking around and just like 
noticing all like the fancy stuff, just turn around and go, uh, look at Eric and just ask him, like, so where are we exactly? Uh, my bedroom. Why? I mean, we're in Glitterhagen now, are we not? I so was... I look at them, mm -hmm. I look at the bed, and I use Druidcraft to make a little, like, flower, and I just give it to Eric and, like, tap him on the shoulder, kind of like, you know, there you go, you know, consolation prize, you know, th thanks for letting us um, uh, land somewhere soft. I how you say consolation prize. You mean, like, compensation, maybe, for having... <laughs> <laughs> I guess, I guess. Pay I the mean, ferryman. Probably could have landed somewhere much worse. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, mm. you know, giving him a nice sweet flower. Unless he has a bedroom Thanks somewhere else. Thanks for making else. us land somewhere warm. <laughs> Some, somewhere. Uh, I just kind of keep. Arius profoundly uninterested in where he might have another bedroom, or if he does, <laughs> just. Yeah, well, we I just. At the other bedrooms. Well, <laughs> we'll have a wee look at the window. Just check. Is it Glitterhagen? Do I recognise anything? I don't know, do you know much about Glitterhagen? Oh, I've been there. So that's about as much as I know. I mean, yeah, but it, okay. ask them. Yeah, I've been to a part of it though. So, yeah. roll history for me then, Reach. History. Yeah. Right. Open that first. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, could be, could be another city. You can put two and two together, I oh, guess, and the fact that, like, yeah, like, Eric yeah, said he lives say. here, this seems to be familiar to Eric. <laughs> <laughs> Could be, so, but doesn't look specifically distinguishable from maybe the view you have. Yeah. Maybe it's because you've never been in the upper part of Glitterhagen, though, because you've got the upper city and the lower city, and the upper city is where all the nobles live, and the lower city is, like, where all the trade happens. Yeah, I probably wouldn't come to the scum site of the city. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's the, the slang for it is the upside. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, okay. So, Eric, what are you doing in your bedroom? I'm standing up, brushing myself off, uh, putting the little flower in my hair. Okay. Just comes around. And then I'm going to go to my door and open it and yell for a seven. I'm going to announce that Lord Rainwood has returned in a very loud voice. Cool. Roll performance. It's not that loud, is it, really? Um, no. So yeah, maybe like you go into the hall and there's very little with... Um, like, you shout, but you don't hear like the scurrying of servants rushing to serve you or anything. Um, there's probably bells and stuff you can ring that like ring the servant quarters um, from each of the rooms, so um, maybe you, you think on that. Maybe that comes to <laughs> Just go, oh yeah, I've got a bell. ding a ling a ling a ling Anyone come? I'm ding a ling my bell. Wait, don't tell that as a euphemism. Don't tell me Meanwhile, while all this is going on, I love... I love the idea that Crumbar is just kind of looking at him like, but why are we inside? Kind of, why did you teleport us inside? <laughs> <laughs> like, we were outside, now we're inside. What? <laughs> Crumbar's having a difficult time understanding how hammers work. <laughs> yeah. yeah, basically. <laughs> He should use an axe, he's clearly not suited for the hammer roll. Yeah, so with that then, you eventually have one of the servants appear. Who is it that turns up, Eric? Um, God damn it, now I've got to remember the names. Yeah, right. This one is... Uh, Evie. Right, okay. Do you want to type in chat the spelling of that? I think we all know the spelling of that. Oh, I was I was surprised, quite frankly. Um, <laughs> right, okay. Evie, right. Uh, older, younger? Younger, brown hair, um, 
possibly about five foot three. Are you a V for Vendetta fan by any chance? <laughs> Can you evolve nope. her into a Flareon? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't tried yeah, to do awesome. it like a plane stone, no. With the right spell. I have seen Right, that might work. <laughs> no, do not kill my, uh, my I son. don't have polymorph yet, guys. <laughs> Shush. Ryan, I wish you a searing smash. <laughs> so, in things that will actually happen. Um, right, so Evie, relatively young, uh, hurries towards the room, and then she looks genuinely surprised to see you, and she says, Lord Rainwood, I w like, no one said you were returning home. Nope, I've just returned home now. I need four extra bedrooms made up for the guests I have, and I point inside the room at the party. Right away, my lord, and off she, off she runs to go get that arranged. Kind of looking a bit like flustered. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> ah, I need to. I'm going to go find my sister, my older sister. Haven't a clue where she'll be, so I'm going to, I don't know, check the study. And before I do, I just turn around to go uh, to everyone and say, make yourself at home. I'll make sure everyone treats you as they treat me. And then walk off. Cool. I hope you like him better than we do. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, <laughs> Savage. <laughs> Some cuts are. I will hit you with a lightning bolt. <laughs> <laughs> You're like the room. You can't even. <laughs> 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 <I'll wait>. <laughs> this is when he's like his room's just got one of those big kind of horn things. And he's listening through the wall. <laughs> <laughs> he's got a glass against the wall. Listen, like, mm, okay, reach. <laughs> so uh, I like the idea that while he's been kind of yelling and shouting and blah blah blah. I've basically been like picking up fire pokers and like giving them a swing and going over to like the broken let like pillars off his bed and picking them up and like Checking giving them a swing, being like, "Hmm, could could this be a weapon? Could 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 this be a weapon?" And every time it's just been like, mm, "Nah, not really." Um, so I'll just turn to re uh, and I've say to him um, I need to go to the Golden Order here uh, want to accompany me? Yes I've, yeah we've both got business there probably yeah That's, uh, can we see what time of day it is? I've looked out the window yeah. is it daytime? Or uh, yeah daytime? it seems to be like morning-ish like, I'm not going to deal morning. with time zones in this world yeah, so yeah it's okay. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> um that's good then. I'll turn so, to Aria and ask her if she wants to join us. Yes, I will definitely join, but obviously before we walk, this has not been, like, I'm guessing the servants would have taken care of the room, so it's not, like, covered in dust, but I'm guessing it would be a quite cold room because nobody was expecting him. Yep. So I'm just going to walk to the fireplace and make a little fire in it. Yeah. <laughs> just to make the room more cosy. Yeah, you can do that. There's plenty of firewood now that the bed's wrecked, so... <laughs> True. <laughs> indeed. <laughs> indeed, indeed, indeed. <laughs> so, yeah. Excellent. So you walk up there, you um, cast, was it Produce Flame? And then... Uh, or, pick or... your choice. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, yeah. Because <laughs> um, Druidcraft can, can uh, um, make a small campfire, mm -hmm. so... That's definitely well, can, one I could use. It can light a campfire, it can't make one, but it can definitely light one. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, you instantly light our st stuff out. Yep. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah, it really is a case of take your pick, isn't it, at this point? So, you <laughs> yeah. you go walk over, kind of, do you whisper anything to the fire, to the wood, to make it awake again, or do you, like, cat just, like, point at it and it lights up? Describe how that happens. Um. I'll, um. Like, basically, I'm I'm looking at the the bed. It's already, you know, it's kaput. It served more or less every single purpose it could have had. You know, it's it's been alive, then it's been used for you know support and you know keeping people 
I, I don't know if you could say alive, but I'm guessing, yeah, you need, you need sleep to survive, so, yeah. And then, um, I'll be like, you know, this is your final purpose. <laughs> and light the fire. Excellent. And like it bursts into flame. Um, yeah. Excellent. So, Arya lights the, the fire. It is definitely not Calcifer. And then, um, <laughs> then kind of joins Reach and Reach and Crumbar. Um, before you like wander off, Eric, where did you go when you left the group? Uh, toward the study to see if I could see if my older sister was in there. Right, you. So you head off to the study, and the other group. You're going to go straight to the Golden Order Hall. Is that right? Aye, uh, yeah. sir. Cool. So you start heading out into the hallway, and then you kind of realise you don't know the layout of the house, which is like a big <laughs> estate. So do you shout after Eric who's walking down the hall with a big kind of like cape kicking out behind him from his, his digs or do you do you a shout at a servant? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. So you just walk a bit until you end up bumping into a servant uh, and then you just get directions out. You don't need to interact too much with that one. That's fine. So they help see you out. Um, they also let you know exactly where your rooms will be when they're ready as well, so that everybody knows that you've got... Tell the servant where we're going as well. Uh, cool. Excellent. Sure. Yeah. Um, they ask if you have a like return time in mind. Uh, next meal time. They kind of nod, and then uh, like courtesy or whatever the appropriate, you know, would be. They're probably a bit confused as well. <laughs> well, like just some elves and it all be fine. Look. Yeah, it's like half elves, orc, yeah, and a wood elf, and it's like okay, this is normal. And like, like you know, shiny gold armor. So obviously, <laughs> at least the masters made friends. You know, like um, right, they head off. I use head obviously into Clary Hagen. We'll come back to using in a second. So you head up to the the study, Eric. Yep. And yeah, you go in there. Is your sister normally found in the study? Is that like where she kind of like spends most of her time, or is this just like a hope? It's um, if she's not busy, she is in the study. But if she's busy dealing with um official business, then she's somewhere else. Right too. So yeah, you go there uh, to the study, and. Let us just put it down to how well you know your sister. Can you roll history? She's in the study. Cool. Um, so I walk in, open the door, and I see she's sat down at a desk reading a book. Well, and I, uh, you see she's in the study. Can you describe what we see as in oh, the person? In, this, in the study, instead of having a wallpaper, you have, like, the entire wall is just bookshelves. And there's just loads of books there. And then there's, like, four desks with four fancy chairs. There's, the flooring is, like, a wooden pattern. And then there's, like, a big blue rug in the middle with the rainwood uh, crest on it. Mm -hmm. And then my sister's sat at one of the desks. Again, tell me what your sister looks like, though. Um, she got um long blonde hair uh, and a ponytail. Uh, she's wearing like a like an array of well, she's wearing like a dress with like an array of blue colours on it with the um house sigil like very prevalent on it. That's white. Okay, I'm gonna say. Or silver, yeah, it could be silver. And what's oh, your yeah. name? Livian. Livian, okay. Lots of V's here. Yep, so you walk in to your elaborate library, not study, library, <laughs> evidently. Um, and you see her kind of like leaning over a, one of the desks. And it seems to have a whole bunch of maps 
maps and scrolls and stuff all kind of stacked up on top of it and she's got like kind of random things like lamps and like um, sextons and stuff like that all sat all, like holding open this big map as you walk in. She kind of got her back to you. I see you're busy as usual, sister. And she kind of like stands up like with a start and kind of turns around. And she's like, Eric. And then we freeze frame there and you tell us, how good's your relationship with your sister? Is she, she's younger than you, right? This one's older than me, but only by a year. Okay, so she's a bit older than you by a year. Is there any bad blood at the fact that you're the head of the family? No, it's a, it's your like medieval kind of the male takes like, you know, the reins. Right, okay. Of the family. So she's okay uh, with that and she's totally fine with that and you just have a good yeah. relationship or he's a bit standoffish? Describe that for it's, you. It's quite good since our parents left um, I, and our old uncle wasn't that like good to us. So someone had to look after my two sisters and I guess we we're really good from that. Cool. So two sisters and the else in that chain? You got a brother somewhere? Uh, there's no brother. Nope, just two sisters. Cool. Um, so yeah, she kind of looks up, she kind of smiles, kind of very politely, but briefly. Um, and then she kind of turns around, sits, um, again, a, another random object on the map, as if to mark her place. And she then turns back to you, walks over to close the distance as you're walking towards her. And then she, like, gives you a big hug. Now, did you let her know you were leaving before you left, or did you just vanish? It was, um, I guess I just kind of vanished, because um, it was just all of a sudden, like, I was walking around the streets looking for the party, because I'd seen him. But yeah, like, obviously, it might have been a couple of and days. Just left. It could have been a couple of days, though, before you got the vision initially, so did you put any preparations in place oh, before? Yeah. I did tell my, my servants that I was leaving, because mm -hmm. that's when I went to go get the inks for Aramos. Mm-hmm. Okay, but I don't yeah. think I address my family. That's fine. So yeah, it's probably like the hug of someone that wasn't sure what the hell happened, right? Like you just randomly went missing and she's been worried. So she got a very kind of like close tight embrace, tiny bit of a shake to her arms as they're kind of hugging into you. And she does that thing where she grabs like each shoulder with a hand and kind of holds you out in front of her. And she's like, where have you been? Looking for mum and dad. And she has this look that crosses her face like you've said something she doesn't like um, but it, it passes and she's like and? nothing although I have learned that my blue eye my blue that happens is connected to something that isn't that good and she looks at you um, now how open with your sister have you been about your weird imaginary friend as a kid, etc.? Uh, like she's the one I confided in. Okay. I didn't confide in my little sister, just my older sister. Yeah, so Livian's kind of, you know, almost like the person you'd go to to talk to. Um, yeah, so she kind of like looks at you with like a, you know, a scrunched up face as if I'll get to that, is the look on her face. And she goes, come and she like motions to the desk as if she's quite distracted by it and she pulls you over to the, the desk where she's got all this stuff piled up and then when you look over there she kind of like motions and it's like as rudimentary as it can be it's a map of the world um, or at least as much of the world has been mapped and she's obviously like got lines that are coming out from Glitterhagen with like days worth of travel, how long it's been since they've been missing, blah blah blah. Loads of like trying to work out where they could have gone, how far, etc. So if a normal person can survive so many days without food or water, and also with the wilderness being as dangerous as it is, blah 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 blah. So she's tried to map out if they've been killed or starved or died or something, where would they likely be found? Radius all over the map. So she's been doing loads of research it looks like and you can just see like maps after map um piled up on this desk 
and she just starts babbling about distances and travel times and where they could have been and every now and then kind of talking at you but kind of over you as well <laughs> okay um i'd just be smiling and nodding trying to listen as best i could mm -hmm. yeah and then like at the like a point where she just stops obviously and starts pointing um on Clara Hagen, then turns to you and says, "So where did you search?" I I point at um, the Golden Citadel, right? And then I go. I've also checked in Horizon. We did briefly go into like I, I guess the Abyss is on the map, right? No, not really. I mean, depends on who made the map, I guess. I just um, say, I've been in this area and just, like, kind of, like, circle it with my finger as well. Yeah, and I think, um... You're fairly well rested, right? Do you want to do a deck save? DC 12? Yeah. She tries to slap you. <laughs> <laughs> and she looks really angry, so I don't think it's the, so much the urge, but you maybe just like catch her wrist in time as like she goes to just slap you, and she's like, you idiot, don't go into dangerous places, I've already lost mum and dad, I can't lose you as well. I didn't go alone, I had my party with me, which are here. And she kind of like motions, like with Don't forget, hands. you had the small boy as well. Yeah, you had that. No. Ten year old, you, you helped him. You lost. <laughs> I, I don't know where that ten year old came from. Or has gone. So it's fine. Oh dear. But yeah, so as like you say, you know, I didn't go alone. I had company or whatever. Like she like motions around. She's like, Mum and Dad were never alone. And she like motions with both hands out to the side to like the house. That's true. But they saved me. They, they're good people. You'll like them when you meet them. They're Someone. here. <laughs> um, yeah, they should be around the place. They might have nipped out, I suppose. I know our orc paladin's probably looking for a weapon of some sort, so... Yeah. And your sister turns to and says, Don't make a game from the goal sheet conversation. And then she turns back to you, and she says, <laughs> <laughs> "Well, no, as as a as, uh, as a character, <laughs> that's the okay. entire party knows Krumbal wants a new weapon." Oh yeah, like that's that's like a no-brainer. I don't yeah, know I mean, like, hey, do, do, don't you diss your sister's fourth wall powers? Okay, <laughs> I'll slap her. Oh my god, is this where all along his sister is the gold tracker? <laughs> <laughs> no, she's, the, <laughs> she's the gold digger. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> God damn. Oh dear. What have you been doing yeah. since I've been gone? She was the entire, what was it, the unachievable goals or whatever they were, the no longer relevant goals. Um, anyway, <laughs> so she, as you kind of say, oh, you know, they're around, they're probably away into town, whatever. She says, ha, kind of like absent mindedly puts like her hand on like your kind of chest almost near your shoulder, and she's like, have the guests, uh, sorry, the have the servants make up the guest quarters. And then she kind of like, Goes to what's your sister's name? Your other sister? Um. Death Vian? No. Evie, Livian. Madeline or Madeline? Madeline, I didn't put in there. Cool. So, Is uh, it fine? Yeah. Oh, that's fine. Yeah, it's fine. Yep, Madeline maybe with a Y. Yeah. So um, yeah. yeah, and she's like, and she goes to kind of like walk past you. She's like, have you told Madeline you're back? No, I literally just came straight here. Where is she? And then she just looks at you because probably the garden. Shrugs. As if, where is she normally, right? And then off Livian walks. She's like, well, we're having a dinner then. And kind of looks at you. Well, I do need food. Because, no, I mean, tell the guests, like the, I keep calling them guests, tell the servants to prepare the dining room. Of course. And then she walks away. Right, let's give time my little sister. Yeah. So, as you go off to go find... I, I kind of call her Madeline all the time. 
Madeline. Yeah, um, Madeline. I'm just got honest, honest. I'm going to call her that. Um, I already hate the name because you're a way to find. Never mind. So it's fine. It's all fine. Anyway, <laughs> as you walk into Glitterhaken, right? So you walk out into again the upper city, and this is pretty much where all of like the big wealthy estate houses are, and it is physically higher up than the uh, lower city. Weirdly, hence his name. So you just head outside the estate. Uh, yeah, where do you just go? Do you just go looking around the upper city or do you just, just book it to the, the lower city? Bro, would we know where about the Golden Order headquarters is here? Not the upper city. Yeah, but, well, right, okay. So yeah, that's if that's the case, I'd, I'd suggest we just head to the lower. Again, it depends how familiar any of you are with the upper city. Probably none of you, right? Um, but is there one in the upper city as well? No. Do we? Nope. No. Nope. The Order Hall yeah. is in the lower city for the, yeah. the Golden Order. It's just the one in the city. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, but yeah, so you just head towards... It's relatively, again, very, very wealthy, clean, nice, polite neighbourhood, etc. People seem to live lives of leisure up here. There doesn't seem to be any form of trade or labour or anything like that up here. It's leisure, it seems, is the focus. Um, so yeah, if you are heading straight for there's like big gates that lead out down at either like at kind of different intervals around the, the upper city and they lead down into the lower city and they're all like heavily guarded. So you just head up to one of the gates, uh, obviously get passage through said gate and then you are into the bustling busy built on top of itself lower city of Glitterhagen, which is bustling. Somebody want to give me a survival check with advantage if someone's helping them and they don't have exhaustion? Because uh, I think, Crumber, you shouldn't have exhaustion now because oh. you've rested. No, no, mine's just gone now. Um, I'll probably be best to or, do Yeah, it. yeah, do it then. Yeah. Cool. I'll be helping. Help me, though, so yep. Advantage, yeah. yep, yep, yep. I should have hold on a minute, Arya, you may be best. To be yeah, fair, I should have been the narratively, one. I'll no, do it. it makes sense that Reach does it because it's the <laughs> order hole we're looking yeah. for. Yeah. Yeah. Takes and he big. fails us. <laughs> no, he doesn't. He's mm, got a 12. 12 might be good enough. 12's okay. It's not like you're having to like hunt for a rabbit in a blizzard in a forest. Do you know what I mean? So I'm definitely not making a beeline for it. But other yeah. Than that. <laughs> but no, maybe you have to walk a bit. You think, right, head towards what smells like the sea. And then yeah. we'll work our way from there. So you start walking that way, then you start to recognise streets, and you think, right, cool, it's over this way. And like you pass the ink shop, etc., um, that you've had. Ah, and, memory. And then you head into the uh, the order hall. So yeah, and you just go. You just got a kind of like nod from the people at the kind of the gates of the again small fort that this is. Um, yeah. What do you do when you're inside? Uh, straight to reception. Is it the person we saw before? Uh, yeah. No, it's and just a random, just a random person in armor. Okay. If we're looking for the great gold worm, uh, we have important news for him. The uh, the guy behind the desk just kind of looks at like a kind of belly laugh, and then just kind of stops, wipes a tear from his eye, and looks at you, and he's like, "Oh, you're serious." Very. He's like, I mean, we all come here to find the great gold worm. It's kind of the point. Oh well. And and Orc can play armor series. <laughs> <laughs> I just kind of butt in and go, well, this involves his son. Yeah. yeah. And the guy's like, okay. And he kind of just like pushes a book towards you. And it's like the, the sign in book. It's like, if you could sign in, I could go get the commander. Yeah. I'll, I'll just kind of scribble down my name as <laughs> writing isn't a good thing of mine. Puts hand in ink, puts hand on page, mm -hmm. crumber. Yeah. <laughs> Probably covers <laughs> most of the page with his hand. Yeah, right. 
Big or writing as a little bit more legibly. Yeah. <laughs> and Leaf on the Wind style writing versus Crumbar. Yeah. Oh. Um, Arya, do you write in the book or do you just le leave them to it? I don't know. I'll be looking around if I'm expected to, but otherwise I wouldn't have a look at me, I was there, sort of. No, because if you don't make motions to no. do it after um, Reach, then no. Like, the no. guy's not expecting you to. It's just because they two are, like, identifiably of yeah. the golden order. They're... They're they're expected to, I would say. Yeah. I don't And then, um... The guy nods and he's like, please wait here and I'll see if the commander's available. And then he disappears for a bit. So, after whatever time passes, this uh, gentleman appears, and you know him to be Commander Slalbas of the Golden Order. Little gnome man walks out, very kind of, you know, dressed down, he's not in his armour or anything, and he kind of walks out, and he looks at you both, and he's like, Paladin. Crumbar, Paladin, Dawn's Golden Reach. Guest. Mm, he kind of looks around both of you as he like angles around Crumbar's leg and sees Arya. I <laughs> nod and say greetings. And he kind of looks at you both for a second and then just like does the Bruce Lee come at me fist move, like hand movement, and then he walks upstairs. Yeah, we follow. Yeah. Um, so he heads up to his office that he's been in before. He then kind of points at some seats and then uh, he sits at his desk. That's it. He's are looking for the great gold worm. And he kind of waves a hand vaguely to the air. Or at least a way to get a message to him. Yeah. And he kind of looks and goes, Prayer, of course. It's Maybe um, uh, well, sorry. Is something more direct than that. I love the scene of him saying prayer. Of course, every one of you taking that go. Yeah. Something more direct, please, as you all talk over each other. Mm. It's brilliant. Um, and he says, "I mean, the great gold worm is a divine being. His movements are his own." Well, his son is in trouble and he kind of goes kind of wide eyed he's like yeah. I see his son as if to continue and he just kind of sits there hanging on the word like son? question mark yeah. and I nod my head kind of like you know why are you being an idiot um, mm. saying Jill or uh, I, I think the name is Jill it's right? a hard G yeah, Gil. Like fish half. I'm sorry. Gil, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> they all have a Gil action figure. Let, let's, <laughs> let's just assume I said it right, please. Yeah, that's fine. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jill, his daughter. <laughs> um, yeah, so you say Gil. The recent sex change. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> I mean, it has been, what, like two months? Who knows what magic has happened to him yeah. since then? Well, it was but, a wonderful place now. Yeah. <laughs> and, um,. Like kind of wide eyes, kind of like narrow a bit, and he's like, "So you know the lineage? Mm. We've fought beside him. Yeah, literally demons from hell. Yeah. Yes, I did receive word from acting commander Adonash. Ah, good. That means I get XP." <laughs> 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 So, you you have returned from your expedition to the abyss. Please, can you give me a recount of the the the, the communication was vague that I received. Uh, at the abyss, there's a massive portal that's opened, and there's things. Well, we saw at least one demon coming out of it. Uh, Gil tacked it as we and shouted on us to leave. Yeah. So we don't know what's happened to Gil at the moment. 
but also there's more portals opened down south. More, you say, in the yes, abyss? Yes, at least uh, in the fairly distant surrounding area. Uh, at least two more that we are aware of. Does the Golden Order Citadel know of this? Uh, can't remember. Do they? I think they do. Yeah, they do. Uh, yes, they do. We went straight back there. They are preparing themselves. They uh, preparing to defend themselves. They only know about the abyss. They the, don't yeah. know about the other two. Yeah, that's right. And they're undermanned for preparing themselves against the abyss. So any yeah. help we can get there would be brilliant. Yes, our resources are stretched rather thin of late. Unfortunately, my forces are dealing with other problems north of Glitterhagen at the moment. I am More portals? I don't know if that's related. This is the first I'm hearing of any addi like portals additional to the one described in the letter. However, there are... And he kind of looks... I know. A bit awkward, um, a bit uncomfortable. And he kind of looks at Crumbar, and then looks at Arya, then kind of focuses on you, Reach, and he kind of continues, kind of keeping eye contact with you. He says, "There have been several orc raids north of Glitterhagen. These orcs seems to be infused, shall we say, mutated." Different. Wrong. I wonder if that's related. Uh, Unnatural, one the, then. Uh, one of the portals looked as though it had been opened by a ritual sacrifice of orcs. Can I just interrupt? Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah, um, just um, as he said that, Crumbar just kind of flares in anger. And yeah, he, he, he shifts. A bit uncomfortably. Yeah. He like starts, like, starts tapping like his little hand on the, the desk, like kind of absent-mindedly. And he's like... It's like, it, like anyone in the room can see that this is clearly... Like, you know that way where something is both upset you and pissed you off at the same time? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. You can blatantly see that across his face. Yeah. And um, Slabas sees that, obviously. And kind of like eyes dart between Reach and Crumbar and he says um, he kind of like twitches his uh, little known moustache and he says no point getting angry about it and he kind of just looks at you Crumbar it's like we have a job to do defend the people defend the world defend the realm and kind of nods at you to see if it's going to like pull you a bit out of your anger Any reaction, or are you still it just does, kind of like it, it? It 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 does a bit, but slides a Snickers over the desk to you. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's like these are my people. Yes, these aren't your people anymore. Unfortunately, these these, as I described earlier, they have been changed. Changed. It's not so good. By what? The best guess is some kind of dark magic. And he kind of waves his hand vaguely in the air. As if that's like... Almost mm -hmm. like that's a weird thing to say, even though it's not in this world. And at this I just kind of grit my teeth at it. It's like... Do you know where... It, the source? And he's like... As of yet, no. I have sent people north to uh, investigate further. However, we can't have innocent towns and villages being attacked by this, pulled away, slaughtered. If this is indeed some kind of ritual sacrifice, perhaps these are the sacrifice that they are gathering. I know all too well the capabilities of orc raiding parties. If they are imbued, as you say, this is seriously a problem that you do not want to underestimate. No. No, no one's underestimating this. We just are unfortunately 
undermanned at the moment. We need all of our forces south, sadly. Given what this, and he kind of goes into his drawer and pulls out the letter that he receives from like a Zadreka. Mm. Uh, it's like, if what you claim is as serious as it seems, I don't even know if the Golden Order can hold back a complete incursion from. And he kind of like waves the letter vaguely in there, kind of incredulously, like from wherever. This is serious. I. I turn to um, Reach and Arya. Say, do you think we'll have time to help up north? I can't sit idly by while Orc are being put through this ritual or whatever is causing this. At the moment, I think we need to look at him. southwest and let them know about the portals and try and get them closed first. Yeah, I look at him and like, you know, release a, like inhale deeply and release a deep breath, kind of like, you know, this is a hard decision. Mm. I'm like, I understand what you're saying, but we have to fulfill our mission. We have to close as many of these portals as possible. The greater of two evils comes first, I guess. And Slalbas kind of like clears his throat. Like, <clears throat> it seems though these could be related. If these people are being taken, perhaps it's to open one of these portals that you have experienced before. The portals would be more beneficial closed before they are opened, if you follow. The conflict in me is just growing. I kinda like I'm kinda like moving my head to the side, you know, like like dogs do when they kinda like mm -hmm. are thinking of something, you know, kinda mm -hmm. like uh right. you know, kinda like maybe he has a point. If <laughs> this, we've also if got it... a method of moving fast. You maybe go south two, three days there, then back up north. You oh. kinda like narrows his eyes. It seems you are better equipped than this order hall. It seems. Uh, we've all used our story points. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, to read this order hall. <laughs> I. I wish. I wish us to pursue up north. I think if we can learn what is causing these portals to open, we'll have a better understanding on how to shut them. We can't rely on just story at every time. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me, the princess, just story is involved? And I just look at him and I was like... Just realising I've made a slip of the tongue there. Yeah, oops. <laughs> Mm, yeah, like, I'm kind of staring at him, not very pleased. That kind of fuck's sake, man, you're not supposed to... <laughs> Just starts punching his legs. Stupid Crumber! Stupid Crumber! <laughs> <laughs> like, like Dobby, right? You know, catching her, your fingers in the mm -hmm. door or something. So, yeah, so you say that, like, he says, you know, the princess, she's involved. Everybody awkwardly looks at each other. She's secretly aiding us to try and... Ah, I was gonna go with things. something else. Uh, okay, sorry. So, it's okay. So, no, no, it's good. Cool. It's cool. Aiding you in secret? What is all this cloak and dagger for? We are worried at the moment that our father, the Wizard King, might be involved, but we don't know. We've got no proof. He no. just starts like looking around the room, like wide-eyed, like, and he kind of like closes his mouth and starts like puts his hand on his fingers that have been tapping the whole time like faster and faster uh, like nerves and he puts his hand on his other hand to stop it and he's like so you're telling me two fairly well renowned like paladins renowned oh, yeah that's what he says he's like paladins are 
you have been to the abyss, you have come from the abyss, you know Gil's origins, you are working with the princess in secret against the wizard king, the king of the the entire kingdom. It's been a busy past couple of weeks, just put it that way. <laughs> and I kind of like nods like, it's been months since I've seen you, nearly three. Yeah, well, time flies when you haven't tea with the wizard king <laughs> and just story. <laughs> yeah. And he kind of just the path fate. The path fate has us on is a long and treacherous one. We must see it through, though. He just kind of like looks at him. It's like dark days. He kind of shakes his head like he's uncomfortable now. Yes. I could not ask you to deter yourself from your path that you seem to be on. I would not dare cross the princess nor the, the wizard king. And he kind of looks around the room again, wildly, every time he says that. And then, uh, however, if these orc attacks come closer to the city, we will hopefully have the backing of the wizard king to deter them with the imperial army. And he kind of just looks, or the royal army, whatever. Um, and he kind of looks at you all as if to say, do I want that? Or do I not want that? Because <laughs> if you are telling him the wizard king's shady... Yeah. I won't I say accept... anything... Yeah. Sorry, you go first, man. Right, okay. I'd accept help wherever you can, but be wary of any help. I just kind of butt in before he has a chance to speak to say this is an orc problem it should be dealt with by an orc and just kind of you know gesture to myself cool we'll leave you on that we'll go down south right <laughs> mm. I, I look the towards the um... <laughs> oh goodness no let's mm. not that please no um <laughs> I look towards the was it Commander Selbas? Yeah, was Commander Selbas. It's S L E L. And, it's um, Selbas. Selbas. Okay, um, Commander. Please. Um, how do I put this? You would do a great favor to both ourselves and to the ones that entrusted us with this mission if you did not mention any details of what you've learned to anybody outside this room. I think he turned back and he's already like kind of necking a goblet of wine at this point. Uh, it's just other than the great gold worm, sorry, if you meet him, please tell him everything. And he kind of like, oh, as you course. say, great gold worm, he kind of like chokes a bit on his wine, <laughs> it down, like kind of wipes his moustache a bit, and then uh, he says, Of course, if I see our great golden worm, I will <laughs> ideally beseech him for protection of this great city and of course the world however um, I will pass on any message you wish to leave for him but I cannot guarantee it will reach him last time we saw Gil he was fighting a demon that just came out of the abyss uh, that, that was just came out of a portal deep in the abyss uh, we have not seen or heard from him since okay, like he urged deep. us to leave and tell his father we did not just Leave him there. It was it was an order. We were ordered to leave. Yeah. Okay, it was a Gandalf moment. Yeah, he wanted all the XP. Um, so like, Slowbass like, nods, kind of as if he's lost in his own thoughts, but he's nodding and he's like, "It's been months, then. If he's even still alive, his father must know. I would urge your discretion." with whom you inform of that fact. I kind of looks at Definitely. you though. Of course. Nice. If um, he is going to assist, and he kind of stands up at this point, whether or not you can tell is different, but he stands up and he says, um, if he is going to assist the great city of Glitterhagen with its northern problems, I would greatly appreciate this. If, however, I understand you seem heavily tasked to the south, and he kind of like exhales heavily. Please let me know as soon as you can. 
if I yeah. can be of any help. Whereabouts in the north of the last attacks been, or when's where's the next expected attacks? It's hard to say. It seems to be random villages, just north um, on the outskirts of the city. Does he have a map at all, of like, kind of pinpointed to like where these attacks have happened and stuff? I don't know. Did you ask him? That's a very good point. I <laughs> could. Do you have a a map laid out of where these attacks have happened? Okay, it says. The uh, the person who was leading the charge, the paladin in charge of this, was uh, tasked to go north and find out. And then, um, give me a second, I'll get you the name of the village. Burntville. <laughs> <laughs> Orktopia? Well, Weirdly! Weirdly. Oh, total. Uh, okay, so let's see if I can get this to work. Oh, wow, well, that's awesome. Uh, I'm just going to generate some random ones here. Yeah, we're going to call it West Deep Peril. That's what we're calling it. Uh, peril, peril. That's how I'm spelling peril. There we go. There you go. And I'll put that into the chat as well. Yeah. And that is a. So that's where the last attack. That is where the paladin in command has been sent to that town to go like set up a forward base etc and investigate from there so that's the town, the little villagey town that he's away to north of uh, basically Oregon. I'm wondering if I can roll like insight or something to kind of obviously as being an old orc myself having been in raid raids before kind of predict where the next attack's gonna be. So I'm gonna roll a D9 for me in the chat. D9? Just yep, just roll straight up D9. D9. Yep, a straight up D9, yeah. Um, see a D8? Nope, you need to do forward slash R space 1 D9. Forward slash R 1 Space D9. 1 D9, yeah. Rolling dice. Nothing happened. No, there we go. There's seven. Okay, so one. Let's find this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Perfect. Right. Okay. I can I get a D two from Arya. Oh, okay. Flip that coin. Oops, that's an unrecognized command. Mm. So it's four slash R. So it's an not two. Four slash R. Then space. It's oh. Space. That's important, but yep, yep. Yeah. yeah, I wasn't putting the space, and I was getting very confused. It's okay. Let's see. Let's see. Building this character, so you have some name to go on. I cannot make it Valjean. That's the terrible name to have in there. That sounds like Le Mis. It does, doesn't it? It is so bad. Um, 
Let's go for. Have you actually watched Lima's? I have school? not. But, uh, oh, sorry, I thought you were talking about me there. What, what, what one? Right, yeah, good point. I was thinking more of the original, but you know. I've seen the original and I hated it. Right. <laughs> I know, very unpopular opinion, but no, I do not like Lima's. You watched it. Hey, don't start naming things French things just because I'm in France right now, okay? Mm hmm. Um, yeah, so this scene. Yes, we la baguette. So in this scene, the <laughs> commander then uh, explains obviously in the like in a village of west to Deep Pearl, um, mm. north by a couple of weeks on foot, just kind of at the the edge of the Bitterwood forest. In there, uh, most of this seems to have taken place in in the kind of villages within the Bitterwood um, and on the outskirts of them. Most of it has been south of Anvil, which is where the dwarfs are. Um, if everybody's looking on the title screen, that's Anvil there. It's like a big underground mountain city. Um, where the dwarfs are. And uh, yeah, that's where the trade comes from for Glitterhagen primarily. The dwarfs trade from Anvil to Glitterhagen. Um, so Glitterhagen's here, Anvil's there, and there's a big underground path towards a uh, forge, which is the, the huge underground kingdom of the dwarves, which is cool. Um, but yeah, Commander Slalbass says, none of the uh, attacks have been anywhere near the dwarves. They don't seem to be braving the retaliation of Anvil. However, the Bitterwood is dangerous at the best of times and dark and the villagers they are very hardy and would be able to put up some resistance but enough to deter an orc raid at the best of times but these orcs are different they have been as I said changed however I, one of our paladin captains named Loron he will uh, he will be in West Deep Pearl. If you are to help, seek him out there. He will give you all the information you require. I'll just pop that in chat because that's all the details of him that you need. Sure. I wish to help. However, I will need some assistance from you. Can you... Uh, Provide me transport. I think, unfortunately, no. We don't have anything at spare. He he travelled by foot. Hmm. No problem. I will seek transport elsewhere. However, can I use can I use the armory here? Uh, make a persuade check for me. Uh, uh, he kind of looks at you <coughs> and he says, um, What is it you're looking for? Our s supplies are incredibly low and thin. <laughs> I just kind of grin. Fun. And uh, like something short and fat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just kind of grin and um, <laughs> kind of pull, pull, pull my the hand axe out of my my belt and just kind of twirl it in my hands and then just kind of like slam it on his desk and goes I like this and he, as you say he, 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 he cuts you off as you slam it on the desk say I like this and he goes yes and I like my desk undented thank you <laughs> don't worry well, he struggles to hit anything your desk is perfectly safe <laughs> yes well I like this but I need it bigger and go visit, one of the, go and visit one of the town blacksmiths. Perhaps some coin 
can get you a suitable weapon. True. I want, however. He starts like then... quite cleaning his desk with like a kind of handkerchief piece of fabric mm -hmm. around it, subtly hinting to get it off his desk. Mm -hmm. Pick it back up and kind of put it back in my uh, belt pouch thing. Mm -hmm. And then they say to him, however, it will be something that I'll need both hands to wield. The shield and crossbow are no use to me with, if that's the case. I'll happily leave them here. And he kind of looks slightly relieved and he's like, any assistance you can give us is greatly appreciated. If you're leaving your shield and crossbow, we will store it in the armory for whoever requires it. The... And he kind of like, looks at you, he's like, the kitchen will be able to make up travel rations if you are indeed assisting us um, going north. We can make sure you at least have food for the, the journey. Like I just nods at you. Hmm. Very well then. I'll acquire weapons elsewhere. And he kind of just looks at you goes, unfortunately it seems that you might have to. Given. He just kind of looks around the room again wildly. And just shakes his head and goes, dark days. Picks up his wine <laughs> goblet and just finishes the rest of it. Let me run errands in town, and I will see what assistance I can provide. And he just kind of like waves the handkerchief kind of at the door, and he's like, it's okay, you can just inform the desk clerk what you need and whatever. Just please, as I said, if you can, move swiftly north. One paladin against these orcs is not enough. Unfortunately, he is just on a reconnaissance mission. He will be returning and reporting, not engaging, with assistance from making kind of vaguely waves, capable individuals such as yourselves. Perhaps something can be done for the villages. Perhaps. Mm. Aye, okay. We turn our business here at the moment, and we go back seeing what we can do then. I'm going to swing by the armory and drop some stuff off and then take care of going to town. So just type uh, into the chat what you're putting into the armory then. That's fine by me. If you're okay, so... Uh, does Arya or Reach have anything else I want to say to Slowbass while you're in these office? Not really, to be honest. Okay, yep, so he's going to say your goodbyes. As I said, pretty much you said if you're willing to help, he'll supply you with rations to make the trip. Um, yeah. That's it. So, where do you go besides the armory? So you swing by the armory, he ditches some stuff into the armory. Um, does anybody else to be honest, I could probably do the same. It's up to yourself if you want to. If this is the time to do it, yeah, so just type into chat what you're willing to ditch. Kitty was here, we could probably get him fully. Yeah, I was going to say, you could have just stocked a small army with <laughs> Kitty <was> here. <laughs> She could have been out stealing spare weaponry from the city. <laughs> um, is it redistributing the wealth, Actually, right? Yeah, is that one word? I think it is. Yeah, right, okay. uh, but yeah, as you are walking through the halls to get to like, the armour, you can see the places like skeletal staff thin. It is not in any way what it was when you were here originally. And there was quite a lot of people bustling about. Cool. Excellent. At least that means that if this place is attacked, there's at least some weapons here, right? That isn't already on the belts of the, the paladins. Yep. Good, good, good. Right, um, where do you head? I want to head to an arm. I figured as much, right. Um, while you go to wander off out of the um, the order hall, Eric, what are you actually doing while they're off here? Um, first up, I'm trying to find a servant. Probably ring, rung a bell to ring a servant to tell him to set up um, dinner for the family and guests. And then I'm off to find my little sister. 
say hello and that I've returned. Yeah, and um, you. Where do you go to find her? The garden. <clears throat> okay, so you head to the garden, and <clears throat> excuse me, there is obviously very, very like fairly well maintained. You've obviously got a groundskeeper somewhere um, to look after the place. You head out, and can you describe Madeline in three words, personality-wise, for me? Naive, energetic, friendly or reserved. Friendly. Cool. There we go. Cool. Anything else poignant you want to get across? In another word, because I kind of filled in one of those for you. Or is that good? No, that's good. That's what I was thinking of. Cool. What does she look like? Um, she has. Short brown hair. Um, she, her age is seventeen. I think I'm twenty two, twenty one. Whatever. I don't put me in stand. Oh shit. Yeah, she's seventeen. Cool. Um, blue eyes, and wearing a similar dress to what my older sister was wearing. Okay. And um, yeah, so you head out into the garden, you walk for a bit down some of the kind of like almost um, what's the word? stepped lawns that you've got. So it's like a lawn and it steps down into like another lawn, steps down again to another lawn. You walk around past lots of hedges and hedge raised type things and there's a part of the garden, it's maybe called the stone garden and it's where there's kind of like stone benches and seating and tables and such and it's where you would go if you wanted to have, like, say, tea in the garden, you know? Um, so you head over there, and you can hear, like, you know, laughing and giggling uh, coming there, and it's very recognisably, like, Madeline, your sister. Um, or Madeline, <laughs> your sister. And, uh, yeah. Do you shout in advance of seeing her, or do you just wait till she's in sight? Uh, I'll wait till she's in sight, and then I kind of just stand and wait for her to notice me. Right, so as you like head around one of the hedges, uh, that kind of like makes the stone garden a bit more private and secluded, you walk around, and she's not alone. There is another woman with her. Kind of pale-skinned, um, clearly from money, um, wearing kind of navy blue, all over as well, so it goes very well with the house. Um, and she has like kind of very silvery hair, um, blonde but very very fair. Um, here she's sat uh, there. She's got, as I say, it's almost like po is it word porcelain porcelain skin, you know, very pale. Um, and she's sat with your sister, and the both of them are kind of giggling and laughing with each other. Yeah. Um, <coughs> I'm just going to be like, stood like, I guess there's like a stone post, like, fence back there. I'll just like lean against that, smile and waiting for uh, Madeline to notice me. Yeah, and um, <coughs> like I think they kind of like laugh and giggle a bit more and yeah. There's very little in the way of like noticing yourself uh, until the uh, the lady that's obviously sat with Madeline. She's the one that's kind of more angled towards you, and like she does that thing where she's laughing and talking to Madeline, and she looks directly at you, and she makes eye contact uh, with you. The tiniest moment where there's a tiny bit of blue, and then she touches like your sister's hand that's on the like in the cup in front of her and then the sister turns round and then she's just like Eric and then runs across the stone garden towards you sorry <coughs> 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 try not to it's bad for your health 
It would ruin the game tonight, by the way. Yeah, like, I mean, pff, what a downer that would be. <laughs> <laughs> We're selling for next week, though, right, guys? <laughs> <laughs> so if you'd like to join this game to replace Eric, uh, just let us know in the comments, please. God damn it. <laughs> Already replacing me. I'm just a number! <laughs> uh, I kind of like... Just go uh, hug her and go, how's my little sister doing? And then she just kind of like, again, squeezes in tight and then she just punches you in the stomach. Of course. He's like, where did you go? Why did you leave? And she just keeps just like trying to like hit you in the stomach. I was looking for mum and dad. And then just like kind of trying to block each of her punches. Mm -hmm. And she kind of like, Realizes that she's got a guest, and then she stops that, and then she kind of goes and like fixes her dress down, so it's not uh, ruffled anymore. She goes, "I've made a new friend, like as proper as she could possibly act, with like her hands clasped in front of her forcefully." It's like, "Do you know Lady Saphir?" I haven't met her. No. Let me see if I can just put her in the chat as well. There you go. And then she like stands up and then kind of like sits our uh, like napkin that was over her, um, or handkerchief I should say, or handkerchief that was over her dress and she kind of like sits it, folds it up on the table, kind of big stone slab essentially, marble, and she heads over very kind of gracefully she's got like a big long flowing, again, blue dress. Uh, as the light hits it, it seems to like shimmer as well. and. Uh, she kind of closes the distance between the two. She's fairly tall as well, like she's easily six feet. Um, and again, striking blue eyes. Not unnaturally blue, natural blue eyes. Frodo levels of... Okay. And um, she looks at you and she says, Lord Eric Greenwood. I bow my head. Mm -hmm. And she puts her hand Lady out. Sophia? Oh, okay. What, like the, um... Of course. <laughs> like the uh, one where you grab it and give it a little kiss, that sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah, I do that then. But yeah, as you grab it, she grips your hand um, and shakes it. And then oh. pulls her hand back before, like as you like lean down to kiss it. So it's more like a handshake than a, <laughs> that. That confused me. And she says, she kind of like then waves her hand kind of in front of you and goes, There is no need for such formality with me. We are friends by proxy, of course. And she kind of gestures between yourself and Madeline. And she says, You can call me Dakana. Okay. Dakana. And she just smiles really, white, like, kind of like, like very warmly, you know. She says, I hear you've been traveling. Indeed. I've been searching for... <clears throat> I kind of gestured toward Madeline and go, our parents. Indeed. Such a tragedy. And she puts like her hand on Madeline's shoulder. Madeline obviously looks a bit upset. I go, are you staying for dinner tonight? And she kind of like shakes her head as if to about to say no and then Madeline is like, oh, are we having a dinner? And she like emphasises a dinner. Yes, I have a few guests around myself. And then she kind of gets a bit excited and she's like, guests? Who? Do I know them? You don't know them, but you'll get to meet them. And you can see that she would have darted off by now, but she's gripping like her two hands in front of her really tightly. And she's like, she turns around, she's like, Lady Sophia, you must, must join for dinner. And then she kind of like courtesies and she goes, I'll go and set the, ge uh, the servants to work. My very handsome and single brother will show you inside. Please excuse me. And then she runs inside the house. 
What? Uh, yeah. You've got a brother, have you? <laughs> <laughs> right, so, yeah, I me. think, are you being just like, was it like Dark Reach? When it was this, this, this <laughs> <laughs> it's like he's under the shade tree. <laughs> but yeah, so... He's not even near me, and I could just see like, <laughs> uh, like, darts of shade being thrown at me, I'm like, God damn it, Reach. No, it's okay, he's left his darts in the armory. You're fine. <laughs> nah, he's still got his shade darts. <laughs> um, but yeah, darts of shade. At least it's not he's not drawing you daggers. That's for sure. Um, but yeah, so as like Madeline runs off, kind of leaving you in that weirdly awkward moment between you and Dakana, Dakana just kind of like starts once and puts like her finger up to her nose to kind of stifle it, as if she found that's really funny. <laughs> 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 I don't know what to say. Well, what, describe what, what, well, yeah, what would what would Eric be? Is Eric, in fact, thrown off by the situation? Yeah. I'm kind of like hunched over, looking at, at looking where she ran, just like like a head tilted a bit. My hands like point outside, like, huh? Hmm. And then um, she then just kind of like looks at you, and then if you look at her, she smirks. And she does that thing where she sticks her elbow out with her fist on her hip. Like, shall we? And she smirks. <laughs> and then we cut to break there. Um, and I'll see you guys in like, what, ten past nine. Uh, yeah. Goodbye everybody who's listened so far. We'll see you in part two. Bye! 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 Bye.